The giant anteater resembles a walking index finger with a mullet and leg warmers. But millions of years of adaptation didn't just prepare it for the 1980s. They are specialized eaters of nature's tic-tacs of the dirt, ants and termites. There are many ants and termites on this planet. I've counted like a thousand, so let's just round up to 10,000. Trillion. This is technically referred to as a shitload of food, if you can catch and eat enough of these poppy seeds with legs. Anteaters have adapted to this challenge in remarkable ways. Powerful claws let the anteater rip and tear into the ant's hidey holes, either on land or in trees, as is the case for the tamandua or lesser anteater, which is a highly skilled climber. Oop, all right, a fairly pretty good skilled climber. The tamandua is not quite as graceful, however, with the walking on the ground bit, though. A bit like a bro after chest and tries day at the gym. There is even a lesser, lesser anteater, the silky anteater, thus named because the term dick-nosed anteater was apparently taken. It is cute though, like the Yoda mod of Wolverine. Its large claws come in handy when it has to circumcise its own nose. <laughs> I kid. But anteaters are not alone. Just to clarify, there's no such thing as a butt anteater. But anteaters are not alone. Roughly 22 species of mammal have evolved similar ant and termite eating adaptations, even though coming from very different mammalian lineages. This is known as convergent evolution. Anteaters split from the lineage of the sloth, whereas the aardwolf is a relative of the hyena. Oh, hello. <laughs> I have no idea what the rest of you is going to look like. Oh. <laughs> There you are. There's the rest of you. <laughs> you gotta start a glam metal band with the giant anteater. The termite-eating numbat, on the other hand, is from a line of marsupial carnivores. Oh, these are cute. Tiny like a chipmunk. I bet it eats termites one at a time like a little piece of corn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Mammals in this diverse group of ant and termite eating specialists are referred to as being myrmecophagous, which does not sound like a real word, by the way. It sounds like something you'd say when you're drunk. You're belligerent, myrmecophagous in my underwear muffin. You stole my blue lighter. Millions of years ago, the myrmecophagous pangolin split off from a lineage that would eventually lead to cats, dogs, and bears when it said, Fuck all this, I want to be a dragon. It said, I want badass scales, and evolution said, no problem. And fearsome, powerful claws. Definitely. Can I breathe fire? Not so much, but you can secrete a foul-smelling odor from your anal glands. You mean something that produces bad smells that's right next to my anus? Okay, seems redundant. What about big, sharp teeth? Well, we're not gonna do the teeth route. But how about this? You get a tongue that is as long as your entire body. Uh, okay. But I'll be huge and fearsome, right? Oh yeah, definitely. To an ant. Having reduced or non-existent teeth, smelly anal glands, and a long, sticky, mucousy tongue are adaptations that many myrmecophagous mammals share. In most pangolins, the tongue is attached all the way back near the last pair of ribs and is able to retract and rest inside the chest cavity. And it is remarkably bendy-bendy. Kiss a pangolin French style and it can tell you what you ate yesterday or whether you're smuggling cocaine, if you know what I mean. The tongue collects the ants or termites and pulls them in through a tiny mouth opening. Lacking teeth like the anteater, the pangolin cannot chew, so its stomach has evolved into a gizzard-like structure. Muscly folds that grind up the ants with the help of a small amount of sand and soil that the animal also ingests. The pangolin cannot form stomach acids on its own, so it uses the formic acid venom of the ants to aid in their digestion. Here we see an excerpt from the indie movie Snuffleupagus Goes to War. And then there's the echidna. The echidna looks like a hairbrush and a cactus shared a bottle of tequila in a Motel 6 and watched a romantic comedy together. Like, like if they did the sex together. Let's try again. The echidna looks like a hamster that held in a fart so hard that it all just went 
pop. The echidna's approach to evolution has been similar to a drunk person making a late night sandwich. Whatever's in the fridge. If evolution's handing something out, the echidna's taking it. Which makes it a bit hard for the echidna to fit in. It is a monotreme, meaning that it is a mammal that lays eggs. But the ducks and the reptiles don't invite the echidna to their pool parties. The echidna also forms a pouch to raise its babies. But the kangaroos don't invite it to share a gogurt, <laughs> a yogurt on the go. The echidna's back feet are rotated in the opposite direction. <laughs> and I've never seen that before. <laughs> you can play it in reverse. <laughs> it totally works. <laughs> So when evolution said that all the echidna had to do was ditch its teeth, add a long tongue, and a gizzard to fit in with the myrmecophagus crowd, it was a no-brainer. And the echidna said, high four. And evolution said, don't you mean high five? And the echidna said, no, I'm referring to my four-headed penis, which kind of looks like a hand. <laughs> and evolution said, did I give that to you? Yes, you did. Trust me, it comes in handy. Echidna. Is that a masturbation joke? No. Yes. Just remember, no matter how different you are, you can always just stop using your teeth and use your tongue. Nope. No, that's not right. You can always stick your tongue in a dirty hole. No, that's, that's worse. You can get on all fours and put your nose... No. Is there an angle around the anal gland thing. That actually sounded pretty suggestive too. The point is, if you ever want to fit in, there's a group of diverse myrmecophagous mammals that are ready to take you in. Listen, I'm not doing the prehensile tail joke. Which one? His prehensile tail needs a prehensile Shri Harpener? I told you no dad jokes. After the dolphin episode, everyone needs a porpoise in life? Come on, I'm sophisticated. Yes, I am. Anteater, 1980s, adamant, adamantium, wolverine. It's a segue into the Ardwolf. 